What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Day Trading Show. In today's episode, James and I talk about how he found success within ASFX. And I know a lot of you know his story already, but we get deeper today than we ever have before. We go in a couple of different directions, but we also give really valuable tactics. I pull some good tactics out of James that are going to be able to be implemented into your trading tomorrow. So shut off your phone, enjoy your run, enjoy your ride, and enjoy the episode. Welcome back, everybody. We are excited for today's episode. James, it's good to see you, brother. Good to be with you. I'm excited for this because I think that uh, a lot of people know you, a lot of people know your story, but today I want to get a little bit deeper with you. The title of the episode kind of gives away the topic, but I want to show, or maybe the better word is highlight your success with ASFX and how maybe if we can, if I can get to some good questions and we can peel back some layers, how you made Let's just call it made it happen step by step is really where I'm going to go. But for everybody that doesn't know you, because you know, we've got some new listeners here to the day trading show and we appreciate everybody. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, do all that stuff. You know the deal. Leave a comment. Even if you're feeling ballsy, tell us what you think. But James, catch everybody up who doesn't know you real quick on how you got into trading and how you found ASFX. And then we'll kind of pick up from there really quick. Sure. Always love filming with you, bro. So good to be back on. Um, <clears throat> So I was playing professional rugby for the Sharks here in Durban, South Africa, and I was studying towards my BCom financial management degree. That's basically the base of it. And in the end of 2018, um, in all, around about August near my birthday, I tore my ACL and meniscus playing for the Sharks on the 21 side um, in my left knee. And basically, I was doing my BCom finance, and my dad's a chartered accountant with his own practice. So I was always interested in finance and school and that as well. Um, I wouldn't say specifically trading or investing but anyway i had a mate that was trading and he introduced me to to forex so basically i got through the net uh, through that took a couple of courses you know youtube the whole spiel and um eventually i found you after a year and a half of not trading consistently i found i'd been following you for a while but eventually after about a year and a half into my um trading career i decided to to uh, get the courses and be a part of the ASFX you found me on instagram team. Correct. On Instagram and YouTube. Uh, first Instagram, then obviously YouTube. And then that's basically how I joined you. So yeah, I was playing rugby, doing my BCom, got injured, found I uh, needed something to fill the void that I didn't, uh, had lots of spare time and I found trading uh, through, a, through a friend. Do you think that you found ASFX and liked it more because of me and my personality or because of the proof you were seeing in other traders. What about ASFX was it that made you, you could just say for simple words, trust me that I was going to help you find some consistency. What do you think sure. convinced you? So I always, to be honest with you, I always, and the listeners, um, I always thought trading was a scam. Like I was like trading, like, like whenever someone told me about Forex and Forex and you know, the, how you guys Americans said, I was like, what? That looks like a complete scam to me. Like Oaks of Lamborghinis, pack, stacks of cash. But obviously I was looking at all the scam accounts on Instagram, but you know, me being naive. And I think I was a little bit closed minded at the time and also very conservative in my views. I was like, nah, I, like, you can't become a millionaire overnight. There's no ways you can, you know, make it in like. Hey, you're not wrong years. about that. Yeah, of course. Yes. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like this. Guys you had the wrong perception, it, it seems like. Yes, like make it quicker in the industry than most. Sure. Like over 10 years, instead of becoming a chartered accountant, doing it for 20 years, and then you right. start making your millions. Instead right. of now, you can start to do it like within a relatively short amount of time compared to other careers. Sure. Um, so I always thought it was a scam. And then I found you on Instagram. And what I liked about you is you're completely different. You didn't show money. You didn't, you showed uh, percentage at that time. You're showing uh, pips and then you'll change onto percentages with the MyFX book percentages and your exit prices and everything. I was like, this is proper trading. Then you put me onto the real guys in the industry, like Mark Bellafiore from SMB Capital, um, Steve Goldstein, you know, those type of traders that actually produce the proper value. And, I was, and that's when I, to, when I hit me, I was like, this was obviously I was already with you, but it hit me. I was like, this is a proper career. Like this, you can do it as a career. This is not some get rich quick overnight scheme. And that's when I was like, this is, this is proper. This is for real. Makes sense. No, that's a good answer. I think like in any industry, you'll always have the, like for, I always think of this example. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I have an aunt. She lives in South Carolina. And I just remember this story, not in its entirety, but the way that I remember it makes sense. And 
the story is like she hired a contractor to come in and fix her house. He and she ended up giving him half the money or something. He ended up taking the money and disappearing. You can't then think that all contractors are a scam because one guy took your money and swindled you. That story, again, is probably way more detailed than that and, and might even be a little bit different. But in that example, she didn't then not get her house remodeled because of one guy. She went and just found yeah. another contractor. She ate, you take the loss. Similar story, like when I first got into trading, bro, like first couple of months, I found this dude. He starts DMing me on Facebook, like everybody else gets scammed on Facebook. And he said, give me nine grand and we'll be able to turn it into this, this, and this. And I got some money together and I money ordered him nine grand and I never heard from him again, never saw it again. But that doesn't mean investing is just- yeah, yeah, but that that isn't that doesn't mean sk- trading or investing is a scam just because of one guy that scammed me. That means I'm a fool and I got played. You know what I'm saying? And I think you learn from those experiences. So I think you, you were open minded enough. You said you were closed minded, but you were. I would give you the benefit of the doubt. You're open minded yeah. enough to be willing to listen and be willing to like try out the things that I was saying. You know what I'm saying? And then when you liked it, you leaned into it more, which is I think what then fed. Um, fed the the momentum that you've carried to like this point now where a lot of people are trying to model the success that you've had. So you mentioned Mike Bellafiore, you mentioned some other traders. And I know how important sports is to you. How do you flex your competitive muscle in your brain in trading? Like how do, how do you keep that side of yourself satisfied? Sure. I think in, it's a, that's a good question. So for me, I always find it like, okay, how many markups did, so in training, this is one thing that's very important for the listeners that are, that are listening either on YouTube or Spotify, or wherever, this is very important. Trading is not me versus Austin or you versus Austin or you versus Jerome or you versus Dennis. It's you versus you every single day. So how I'll try to look at it is like, okay, how many markups did I do yesterday? How many markups did I do last week? Am I doing the same, if not more markups this week? Did I do my daily report card today? Mm. Did, oh, I slacked off. I slacked off. I didn't do it twice this week. That's, th- that's not what elite traders do. I need, to, I need to be doing them every single day. If I sit here and preach and say, I want to be an eight-figure trader one day, but then I'm not doing the work. Uh, so I'm saying one thing, but doing another. That doesn't work. So that doesn't, it's, you have to, they have to, what you say and what you do have to equal each other. They have to be in uh, conjunction. So I, that's where I find my competitive now. So uh, competitiveness now. So I had it in sport, but now I have it in the fact that I, that I have goals written down, but in order to fulfill those big goals, I need to be doing stuff off the desk. So everyone thinks that oh, I can be sitting here and not doing anything. That's, it's, it's not like that. Trust me. Like, also now putting in work behind the scenes that we don't even show on our socials or even sometimes tell everyone, you know? Right. Right. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. So it's really like competition with yourself. Like you are in, and I think that that's so true, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you first found ASFX and when I first got into trading, I'll say, I didn't know that it was going to be that competitive with myself. People are all over social media saying it's buyers versus sellers. It is buyers (laughs) versus sellers, bulls versus bears. You can look at things that way, but at the end of the day, and I was, I had a tweet about this. It goes well with this. Um, you, You can be a really great trader and we could talk about this if you want more, but like, that doesn't mean you always are going to trade. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at what I have to have. It's like you can be a good, good sportsman, but you're not always going to play well. Exactly. Same thing. Same so, the, so when you're competitive with yourself, it's reinforcing when you don't perform well that you can still do better. I feel like, you know what I mean? Versus yeah. if you're like constantly losing to some other, like for example, the Rowdies, my soccer team are going to go this yeah. weekend and we're playing a really tough team. If you keep losing to the same team, it's very demotivating. It's just like, they're fucking better than me. They're just better than me. But if I'm losing to myself and I can assess it more and then I'm the one that's in control of that, I got way more probabilities of getting better every, every single day, I feel like, yeah. in that situation, you know? 100% agree. And I also want to just touch on the reason why, um, why I fa- felt that I really, like once I realized trading was a real legit career, I've really dove into it. And that is because, so my dad, obviously being a CA with his own um, 
practice and everything. Mm. Uh, when I was at school, everyone used to say, James, don't worry, bro. You just get your BCom degree and you're going to be rich or just take over your dad's company. So, but, but I always had this competitive nature inside me. I'm like, nah, stuff like that. I didn't tell people this, but I actually took offense to that. But, but I didn't tell people, I didn't show it. I actually just kept it to myself. Really? Um, but yeah, hundred percent. I never told anyone. I, when someone used to say it to me, I'm like, yeah, I'm thankful that my dad's like, well, do you know why you didn't want it? Why did you not want to get into this? Because I always business? wanted to create, I wanted to create my own path in life. I don't want to say right. I made it because I just j- piggybacked on my dad. I didn't like that. Like, so for me, my, yeah. sto- my example, I can parallel that really well. When I was in college, my dad saved up a ton of money my whole life from when I was born to send me to college because that's what his generation was told to do. And it does work for a lot of people. But in that, he was like, yo, when you're in college, you can go study abroad and you should go live in some other country to, mm. for a couple of months and go learn and get credit for that through school so you can travel. And I always said to him, why would I spend more money out of the money you've saved up to go do that when it doesn't have any return. And I can go do that on my own money once I build something that's mine and making me, and I'm making money, basically. I always said that. You can ask my dad, ask anybody. Like that was, I I was like, I'll go to, he was like, for another example, I'm Jewish, you know, so by birth, so I could go to birthright. I go to Israel for free and I never went. My brother and all my friends went all on one trip. I should have went in that group, if anything, but I didn't go because I've always said, when I want to go, I'll go on my own money. I'll make my own money. Yep. I'll do it. So I've felt the same way, bro. I can definitely relate to that. And I think it's a good thing. It's self-sufficiency. It's like confidence and self-sufficiency come together to make that characteristic in us. But that's what makes you believe that you could be an eight-figure trader one day, which I think you will. Like, that's what I think that that's that. It's almost, you could almost look at it from the outside and say it's blind confidence, but it's not. It's it's belief. It's different. It's like, yeah. you you. it's a knowing. It's a, it's a belief that creates a knowing, if that makes 100%, 100%. sense. 100%. No, I definitely, definitely agree. And uh, another one that I'll just, uh, where I find this like confidence from is like shock within SMB capital, right? Okay. He used to tell his mom that he's going to make a um, million dollars in a trading year when he was only making like $50,000 in a trading year, which is obviously for early twenties was a lot, is a lot of money, but he used to tell it. And his mom used to like laugh at him and how he's, he did it before the age of 30. And his mom's, he, when he told, when he showed his mom for the first time, his mom was just like unbelievable. But his mom was like, you told me this when you're 23, now you're doing it and you're 28. So it's so cool to see like the power of belief, bro. Yep, exactly. Power of belief. So, so I, think, I think that's yeah, what brought me th- th- this far is my belief is that I, 100%. I, first, I, I got a, dip my tone. I saw that it was possible. And then I just believed and that it, I could do it myself. What are some of the, like, I don't want to go too far off topic of how you found success with ASFX. Sure. So what are like, how important have journaling and doing chart markups been how instrumental in your success were they? Are they? Very, I'd say very important because specifically for me, coming from a sports background, we used to study film after the game, right? You study film before the game, you study film after the game of the opponents. Obviously, in this case, it's actually you. So you're studying film of yourself in trading. Right. So right. think of it like that. Um, but very important. The reason being is because in sports, just like trading, how are you supposed to know what you're doing wrong and where you're effing up? If you're not going back and seeing where the F-ups are, like if you're losing money, if you lost money for the past month, right? Go, there's a reason why you're doing it. It's not just, oh, the markets, the buyers versus sellers. No, there's a reason why it's happening. You can make money trading and you can make it as a, as a career. There's got people and women and guys doing it for a living. So you can do it too. So there's a reason why you are effing up. Then you got to go back and see why you're doing it. So journaling and, and marking patterns up and pattern recognition has been very instrumental for me, especially uh, of finding what I do well within the ASFX system. So mm-hmm. I trade the ASFX systems, but I might trade it completely different or slightly different to how you trade it. Sure. But, you might, but we can both, both be profitable, but using the same indicator, same TDR, everything like that. 100%. Uh, I 100% yeah. agree. That's a great answer. So if you could give tactical like tell if I'm a new trader in ASFX, I just bought the courses within the last year. I'm still trying to find consistency. What would you say? Number one thing to do is it sleep eight hours a night, do this many chart markups, eat this, do like, what would you say is if you could pick one thing? One thing. <clears throat> I'd say one thing that yeah. I would definitely do is consume is consume valuable trading content first. 
that's the one thing that I would say is was also very instrumental for me. I'd say probably the most instrumental is like consume- what specifically books, audio books, everything. Audio audio books on Audible, quality YouTube videos, not some bullshit YouTube YouTube video of guys saying, "Look, I made twenty pips today" or whatever. Like right. literally, a guy like you you showing me, "Look, you don't need to make hundred pips; you can make twenty pips," but not you know, sh- not risking flipping and absurd like, amounts. So, of like it. learn something from the video. Don't just get the 100%. lifestyle or the, the ideas yes, flashed in your video. face, like, like facts, Correct. information. Facts. Like Value. you do it. Like I used to, I used to consume and I still do actually, I go back and watch your trade, your trade recap videos. They, those are, they are flipping magnificent. The ones when where I, I used to like film in the morning and then film during the trade Correct. and like film at the end. When you're still in Philly, when you're ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? That was a good idea. Maybe I need to bring that back, bro. That, that was, oh, a that good was idea. really, really good. Yeah. And um, I, I just used to consume a lot of, lot of content. And then when I got into ASFX yeah. in January, I joined ASFX in January 2020. Yeah. Um, I just, you put me on, as I said, to SMB. I started to watch their YouTube videos, started right. to listen to, um, didn't even know who Mark Minervini, who um, right. Mark Douglas was before even knowing you. So then you started to put me on to these guys and I started to consume. I've read all the books like that you can think of. Then you, even now you'll say, James, this is a good book. I'll be like, cool, I'm going to go buy it on Audible. Like stuff like that. We, it's never the learning process never stops and never stops i'm 23 years old if i can be doing what I, if i can do what i've done in since joining you which has been like just over two years imagine where i'm going to be by the age of 30 i you 100%, know like 100 so, so the, the number one thing yeah. is the the content the content, content. you consume makes the yep. difference and Don't, i think that yeah. the, it, it probably is very true because the content you consume will reinforce or in, introduce you to new habits and new ways of thinking yep. and new ways of operating as a trader yep. versus if you're consuming the wrong content, it's going to put you in the wrong direction. So you've main, you've mentioned a lot of people and a lot of books already in, in this episode today. So people hopefully have some uh, new content to go pursue for themselves. But what's interesting to think about too, is like now more than ever, you are newer in this, but you've been around for a little bit longer now more than ever everybody is starting a YouTube channel and talking about trading everybody. Yeah. So it's even harder if you don't mm-hmm. know to find the good ones. Like, but like you I said, understand. before you found me, you didn't know about those guys that are legends. You know, no one's talking. A lot of people don't know them. They're not talking about I it, didn't know them. bro. Yeah. So I think you have to take a lot of time and let me draw a parallel here. Take a lot of time to pay attention to who you're learning from what you're consuming. For example, and where they got their information. For example, with my yoga teacher training, I paid a lot of money. I think I told you like four grand for the teacher training over six months. Yep. But there's other companies doing it for $700. Other yoga studios doing it for $700. The thing yep. about it is though, the people at my yoga studio, we're like four people away in the lineage of one of the modern fathers of yoga, Krishna Macharya. Oh, wow. So you go to some of these other yoga studios, you would not know the names of people who have taught my teacher that are right there, bro, like from India, like OGs. So you pay yeah. to get that close proximity to the source of good knowledge. So sometimes you've got to pay for a course or pay to be in a community or pay to be in ASFX TV to be around a, a, a proper source of information. Does that make sense? You go do the yoga teacher training for $700. You're not going to learn from the people or even learn about the people that I'm learning from directly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just am a big believer in paying to be around high level people and high level information. You know, I agree. That's why we, that's why we had the, have the BSC. I mean, you pay to be around you and me. It make, it's exactly the same concept. And also, I just wanted to touch on that as well is that the people, as you said, lots of people are creating YouTube channels and it. Now that's it's so as you said it's so hard to decipher which one to follow. You know, sure, sure. what I realized with you and the SMB and that there's people that so it's the same thing about the yoga. There's people that are doing it to actually create value, mm-hmm. aka your one. That's it's m- more expensive, yes, but it's cr- actually creating value. It um, filters out all the ones that are just doing it just to get it and say they have it. 100%. Then you get other people that are just doing it to make money. It's the right. same in YouTube. The traders that are putting out content just to get views and that and try and make money off YouTube, but get and then and getting people that actually want to create value, like yourself, right. like SMB, like uh, Dr. Brett Steenbog, that actually are try- just really doing it to create value. That's right. all. Like us, the only re- I'm not getting paid to this to do this. You're not sitting here getting paid to this. We're right. doing it because we, we made four hundred dollars on YouTube last month. Everybody, yeah. four hundred <laughs> bucks. That's it. Yeah, and we fe- and we feel we can 
put things we feel we got some value to share and we really want people um to 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 share it yes we may be maybe a lot younger than mark and them but we still have um value where we can provide imagine if we can. keep doing this bro till we're his age you know bro we have all that content all that content imagine for like 30 years of content people that'll be that. crazy bro that'll be crazy yeah. just thinking yeah. about that is interesting you know i feel like too as we grow and we push ourselves to learn more, it only helps other people be motivated to do the same. You have to lead by example. And I feel like I lead by example as much as I can. And you saw that and you modeled that. And that's why people come to you to learn now. You see that? You know what I'm saying? 100%. And that's why and that's why I always appreciate you. Like this is one thing that I like I didn't actually expect when you so when we when I joined ASFX, right, mm. I was like literally already so stoked that you answer my Instagram messages and yeah, we are actually working together. So it's right. quite funny you know, when you put things into perspective. But that's the universe and the world. Um, just when you when you be uh, genuine and you put yourself out there, um, good people will find each other. So um, I think yeah, I think that um, it's just it's it's like a great thing that um, how it's we've started when we were in the beginning, how I started in the beginning until where I've come now. That's what I wanted to say is that I started um, literally just being thankful that you replied to my Instagram message and how we are working together. Uh, but one thing I wanted to say is also, you got to be very um, self uh, with the content. You got to listen to positive content, right? Yeah. You have to be like, you, like Gary V. You have to be around people that are very, very positive in what they're saying, because, in my career, there was, was a lot of naysayers and that, and I'm sure there was uh, with you. So I'd also like to touch on that with you because, yeah, yeah there just was a lot of people that doubted me as well. well it, and it's like, just about like, it goes back to what yeah. you said is the most important thing. It's the content. It's, it's what are you listening yeah. to? Who's trying? What you were saying before about how like the, I think the direction we were going was more about like the, the person that you're learning from too leads by example. And you were saying, and mm. I was saying how, I think I modeled that well. Yes, that's sorry. You, I, I actually did lose that point. That's I could tell. I no, go. that's why I'm bringing it back. So you were saying that something, there was something that I did well by leading by example that motivated you, I think, right? Is that the direction you were yes, going? Yes, correct. Um, yes, you, yes, I remember that. Yes. Okay. You, if I'm not mistaken, it was um, by my memory from two minutes ago, it's not great, but it was that you were always um, being open and honest about your losses, about mm. everything like that. And with the community, like saying, okay, cool. I'm in this trade. That makes sense. I'm in this trade. And, and, and you're showing us even your screenshots, as I said, from the my, my fix book and everything like that, which encouraged me to be like, okay, cool. Look, he's got his account linked to my fix book. I'm going to do that. And look, he's, he Austin can do it. Anybody can do it. That's, right. Rather and, than and me just sitting there from my car and, telling you what exactly. to do. Right. Exactly. Right. Yep. 100 percent. that that was what i wasn't i don't know bro say. i just feel like some people don't have any morals when it comes to social media like they think that the things that they put on the internet are going to go away in the future it's like bro you gotta have kids and family and things that see that shit it's like don't you gotta have some respect for yourself and it's like bro we're we're not we're all right you know what i mean we're not the smartest yeah. two guys in the group we're not yeah. the dumbest two guys in the group but if we're sitting here yeah. thinking about like how we judge people based on the content that they put out and we try to sniff out the best content and that's what's helped you find success and i would say that's what's helped me find success as well how do these some of these people think that the content they're putting out is good it's just like if it's right. not yeah i mean you know what bro this is where it's like we're in a business mindset you and me and i think that's another thing that's led you to success too is like just like your approach to trading is like this isn't a hobby this isn't a game that i'm just playing like it's very business focused some people are like nah bro this is a game i'm entertaining i'm going to be entertaining yeah. right valuetainment yeah. right it, the value that's, is in the entertainment in that really situation not so much in the value you know but we always go uh, value first cuz we're focused on the business we're like yo teach me something make my business more valuable help me make more money don't show me the lifestyle that you have kind of thing, but that works, yeah. bro. People, people, people don't want to be helped, bro. The most people, yeah. I mean, except our listeners, most people don't want to be helped. Even if they say they want to be helped, that's the bigger bro, problem. Like, you know, I'll put on, I'll, that. I'll put on, I know you do it as well. You, I mean, uh, your, your most viewed reel on Instagram is of you driving in your, in your uh, test. Right. Right. But then right. You actually put out some like 40 K views. And then you got some, you actually post some valuable content, 5,000 views. I'm like, right. Bro, right. No, bro. That one video got like a hundred and, 50,000 views and I wasn't really? even talking. It was just, it was just words on the screen. I saw it when Bro. I was on 40. I was like, Shit. no, no, no. I, it's probably more than that. Now I'll go look while we're talking, but yeah, it was, it was insane. up there. 
Yeah. So you see, like what we call what so for the listeners, what we're trying to say is that you got to listen to value, valuable content like that. To be honest, it looks cool. It looks um, cool, but it's not it's not valuable. Is it valuable? Is it helping you make more money though? No, probably not. Um, but people, but see, this is okay. Let's piss, just pick this apart a little bit more. People would say, well, it helps me make more money because it's valuable and it's entertaining and it's mo- motivating. What do you think about that though? You know, like if the guy takes a cool video from his Lambo, I know we're getting off sure. topic, but like that, it just I, is distracting. I it's think, just distracting. Yeah, I think, I think what I agree with that it's motivating, but it should it be, you got to, it should it be the most, the content that you're consuming the most? Probably not. Probably so not, yes, right. obviously you, you, yes, if it's like 10% of the content that you're watching, sure. But is it going to help you make more money? No, probably listening to um, Mark Villafiore or hopefully our podcast is going to help you make better trading decisions, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm trying to find this video. I can't find it. Um, and also wanted to, to also touch on quickly. One thing yeah. that, yeah. Um, you know, South Africans always do things quickly. Um, <laughs> but um, so one thing that's also awesome has pushed me into- 33, 33K. Okay, thirty-three k. So that's 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 a lot. I think that's the one. I think that's the video. I don't know why is I said one hundred and thirteen, but I, I knew there was a three. That was just awful. Okay, cool. So uh, I, that's still a lot of views compared to the others that are For sure. actually a lot more valuable. Yep. So what I wanted to just touch on was um, the fact that you always pushing me into new markets, right? So no, no, no. I lied. Sorry. One hundred and seventy-eight k. That was the first. One hundred and seventy-eight. That's told yep, you, bro. That, yep. Don't think I'm playing. <laughs> Jeepers. And All then right, you sorry, got, I'm distracted. Yeah. You fin- finish your no, thing. No, no, 100%. That, but that's that's just the point. Just so everybody knows, I wasn't wrong. 100 fucking thousand views on no words. Just me in the car. Yeah, just you in your car. Looking looking like you got a big You know what, cat. bro? Not to go off. I want you to make your point if you remember it. But like, we're just stupid yep. monkeys, bro. We're smart monkeys, I should say. We're like, yeah. we're not as dumb as monkeys in some ways, but we are still dumb monkeys in some ways. We're easily distractible. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's way 100%. easier for me to wow you with the car. I take the other approach of trying to bring value. It takes me way longer to convince you. But when I do convince you, like I convinced you, you learn a lot and it changes your whole life, you know? Bro, changes changes my whole life. Like, yeah, hundred. like I wouldn't be where I am today. I'd probably be back home working for my dad or in another company earning like little close to nothing just trying to you know and with and like sitting by myself with no no direction life because i'll be like well how am i supposed to become a millionaire bro it worked out for us exactly it just worked out for us Uh, um, remember your point what you were going to say yes i wanted to say um that yeah, I don't remember. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. No, this is good. We no. can wrap it up here anyway. That was good. I think yeah. this has been a good episode. So um, I think we've touched on a couple of different areas that are going to be valuable to the listeners as far as like what they could try to do to model your success. Yeah. You gave them a really good tip as far as like paying attention to the content they consume. You gave a lot of good book recommendations, podcast and audio recommendation, book recommend, all that stuff. So I think there's definitely some substance here and some really good ideas that'll get everybody's wheels turning. So I'm happy with this one. If you guys enjoyed the episode, make sure you let us know in the comments, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. We're dropping an episode every Wednesday. And if you have any topics that you want covered, always submit them and we will get them covered if they're valuable enough and worth it so james appreciate you brother always brother yep, all right always. everybody <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next episode